What up, y'all? Y'all know what it is. Your boy, I'm back, man. It's your boy, Big Boosie, man. As y'all can see, I'm taking a quick approach. I want to come holler at y'all about a few things, man. And I'll get back to my other set later on. Something real quick, man. I want to uh, wish my brother a happy birthday, first and foremost. My brother Dame Dash, y'all know him on Instagram is um Dusko Popperton. Uh, you know, quick story. On some, you know, on some give a brother they props, man. One thing I noticed about this Instagram, it, it, it I mean, excuse me, this uh YouTube and even Instagram, you get more attention when when you beefing with somebody, you going back and forth, and you know. I see a lot of platforms, we going back and forth, talking junk. We get so many views off that stuff. But when you get somebody, they props and, 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 you know, they love, you get less views up here on YouTube. And I don't know what's going on with YouTube, man. But I've been hearing everybody saying since I started my channel, everybody been saying YouTube play with numbers. And I've been noticing, man, my, my numbers was high before I got monetized. And when I was close to monetization... It started, uh, it started, you know, getting a, a little less than what it was from at the beginning of it. And then, you know, when I give people their props with certain things, it seems like, and I, and I post like positive type style content, it, it gets, it, you know, the numbers get a little low. I don't, I don't know, but I, it'd be good content and it'd be good um informative information it'd be good um things for the youth it'd be good things to uh enlighten people you know and you know i gave my brother dame some props on a few things and people always might wonder why you know i give you know a guy um well not a guy well my friend my brother his props in different things is because he always been a good dude and always been a real dude. And I had plenty of stories with my bro because we've been through a lot. We've been friends for 20 to 30 plus years, man. However you want to, you know, call it. I'm just throwing out a number, but it's been a very long time. And a lot of people don't last being friends that long without falling out. And I mean really falling out. You know, everybody go back and forth, but not arguments, debates and stuff like that. Then they don't be friends anymore. But... You know, me, him, my brother, Jay Black, a few of our other friends, we've been friends for a long time, man. And when a brother do something for me, I like to give them their props. I don't, it don't just stop in one place. So y'all going to hear me talk about my friend. And, you know, um, I know he got a lot of people that, that despise him all through this YouTube land. And, you know, they have their own opinions. I'm not mad at them. That's cool. Everybody not going to like everybody, you know. I have opinions about certain people as well. And that doesn't change no uh, perspective for me to look at anybody different. That goes for anybody if I rock with them. And, you know, that's my bro. So, you know, I'm always them give my brothers flowers, especially all the things he done for me and my team and helped me and my team out. Uh, put me in classic movies, you know. Um, even when I wasn't even supposed to be in a movie, he made sure I was in there. Still gave me credits for it. For just having some quick roles. On the Honor Up, as y'all can see behind me, the Honor Up poster. You know, he let me do the soundtrack. Me and my boy uh, Blackface. It's another thing. With him and Kanye West film. A lot of people can't say that, so I'm always giving my brothers props. Can't help it. As you can see, his book, Culture Vulture. I did the mixtape for that. Um, Los Sadas. That's uh, kind of right there. Y'all can see that. I did the mixtape for that. Me and my team. So, you know, I'm always give love to my brother. So, I want to say happy birthday to my boy publicly in front of everybody on this YouTube channel. Y'all go and wish my brother, Dame Dash, happy birthday. Um, and, and many more to come. We need brothers like him to give you them jewels without hiding them like everybody else do. 
They want to keep it to themselves, those sucker moves. You know, we from Harlem, so, you know, we don't mind giving the jewels because there's enough money out here for everybody. It's just about how you attack the situation, man, and attack your situation. I'm going to give you all a quick story, another one by my brother, Dame Dash. Um, as you all know, a couple years ago when he was fighting for his daughters um, to make sure that... Um, he stays into their life appropriately and properly as public. So, you know, I'm not saying nothing that's a secret. And, you know, he won that battle. And one thing he don't do is play about his kids. As everyone else should. You know what I'm saying? And um, during that battle, anybody else probably would have shut down. That brother standing tall. He still was making moves. And he came down to North Carolina with me and my brother Jay Black, man. And once we got to North Carolina, you know, I, I can get into the, how we, we started up in New York and traveled all the way down on the van going to get my, my boy's uh, Sprinter van, custom made, plushed out, only one of a kind. I told him what we was doing. His name is Jabbo, God bless him. I miss my brother Jabbo. And uh, I told him that Dame... Uh, ready to roll with us down south and see what's going on in North Carolina, man. And he said, man, take the van, do what you need to do. And the dame was ready to spend thousands of dollars in renting a, a big Sprinter van. And I'm like, nah, hold on, let me run to Brooklyn and holler at my boy. So long story short, you know, he called Murder Mook up. Mook came down on the van with us and all that. So long story short, we get down south, showing him around. We get down to Raleigh first. We didn't even make it down to Charlotte and Albemarle yet. I'm showing them around, you know, the Raleigh, the Durham, Raleigh, Durham area. So once he get here, I mean, at least just start thinking like, yo, we need to do some events or something. So I asked him, I said, yo, bro, I'm putting together an event, man. I want you to come through and host it and all that. And guess what he said? He said, all right, where it's going to be at? I told him the spot, and I told him it's a spot that I frequent, just on some chill-out stuff here and there. There was a spot called The House out here. It used to be called Time Out in Durham, Durham, North Carolina. So he was like, all right, cool. So he ain't think nothing of it. You know, we, I, I, so I get together with my team. We start putting the flyers and everything together. I, I, you know, I talk to the, to the young owner of the spot. And he said, yeah, Boosie, you, you always been a good grace for me. You, my, my house is your house. And he let me get the spot. So I put the date together, put the flies together. Dame Dash come and hosted by him. And, you know, we put together a big event. Started promoting it. I had the team out with the flyers everywhere. The, 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 the social media, all my team, everybody posting it. Everywhere it's going all through Durham, all through Raleigh. We got crazy. And I've been getting a big response about it. It got so big. And Freaky Ziggy was down here at the time. But he was, I think he was running around with Cam and them. They had that little tour going on. But he even heard about it. So this particular one day, I'm going to just show y'all how real my brother is. Dang. So, you know, we was out eating one day at, uh, at a little sports bar that I frequent down here. And I took him there. Dame loved the restaurant, him and, him and Rocky, his wifey. And um, so yeah, sports bar slash restaurant. So we out there, we hanging out, we eating. And he, he tells me, Jay Black, he was like, yo man, I just got a call. And they saying, yo, Durham ain't the place to be. Durham is wild. He was like, I don't think I should go up in that club. He was talking about uh, Zeke, which Zeke was telling the truth. Durham, anybody that knows Durham, Durham is one of the wildest cities in North Carolina. Nothing to play with on no level. So Freak, uh, Freaky Zeke calls him and tell him that, you know, he don't think it would be good for a person of Dame's caliber to go up in that type of spot. So he tells me and Jay Black, and I'm like, I'm like, um, I said, I respect where Zeke coming from with that, um, bro, but um, 
the Bull City, that's my second home, Durham. They call Bull, Durham Bull City because it's wild like a bull. They say you mess with the bull, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. It's the Durham logo. So I tell them, bro, man, we great down here. I'm highly respected, and I know all the who's supposed to be. All the um, the it guys that cause a lot of shots out there. And we ain't going to have nothing to worry about. We're going to have a good time. So he thinks about it. I see him. He was like, he was like, all right, cool. Cool. So we eating. We chilling. We eating. And as we eating, once we finish eating, once we finish eating and uh, we was like walking out, start walking out towards the uh to the van, you know, because we was getting ready to go roll, roll out and roll around a little bit. He tells me, he was like, so y'all got everything covered? Everything good? I said, yep, everything great. He said, well, for y'all, y'all my brothers, y'all telling me that everything going to be good? I'm going to trust y'all blindly. I'm going to the club. I'm going to listen that y'all got everything secured. And everything good. He's like, man, fuck that. Let's do it. I'm like, say no more, bro. I got it. I, I got you. I went straight to the radio station, K97.5. I put radio time up there, put commercials out. We flooding the commercials. So the day, the day, the, the day of, we get to the club. He sees it's flooded out there. And I mean flooded. People was coming from everywhere. We get up in there, my boy was, you know, he chilling, he comfortable, he doing his little thing. Y'all know how he be doing his little, his little one two and all that. So I'm like, yo, I told you, and 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 you know, I had all my official dudes around me, all the guys that's highly respected out here in Durham as well. And I'm, you know, certain places, certain people can't go in Durham, but I'm loved in like all parts of Durham. Even if I might got some haters out there, it is what it is on certain parts. But I, I got a, every part of Durham, I got a few good people that got a lot of love and respect for me and vice versa. So he in there having a good time. It's packed and it's flooded. We, we you know, we killed them. And, it's, and it was, and, and you know, it's a nice size spot. You probably get about 800 people in there, 1,000 if you flooded with the outside and all that. And uh, we wasn't even hitting people in the head. I just wanted people to get a feel of my friend that he all the way from Harlem, a big name such as him, an icon is down here in the town, hanging out regular, just like y'all. We didn't have no security, no none of that. Just us and our team. The club had the security, of course, you know, but people show my boy so much love, man. And he was showing love back, taking pictures with everybody. And we had a great time, man. Great time. So when we leave out, um, we leave out, you know, the next day. Um, leave out, go to the hotel. Then, you know, the next day we go get my bro. And I forgot exactly where we was at or whatever. So, you know, me and my boy, we broke the money down. Made a couple thousand. We broke about eight thousand. I want to say we broke the money down, and you know it was th three grand left over. We like, man, let's get that shit to Dane. They was like, bet, that's right, let's give it to Dane. Me and Jay Black told um was like, yeah, we gonna do that. And he wasn't asking for no money. He he just came on the strip for us to look out. This is why I say he a real dude. This is why I say. You know, um, I'm always have loyalty to my brother, a brother that looks out for me, a brother that looked out for my team to help me put money in my team pocket as well. And he's been doing it for years. I'm going to give you all stories simultaneously of things that he have done. You know what I'm saying? For, for me and my team. But so we pull his coat. We was like, yo, Dan, this is for you. He looked at us and What's this for? I, I said, yo, that's that's three racks. 
He's like, well, for real? He's like, wow. He said, yo. He said, nobody ain't never gave Dame Dash no money, man. My friends gave me some money. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, he, he you know, he was so happy that the fact that uh, we considered him. And it wasn't like, yeah, we just got him down here for no reason that he understood that he counts too. He was like, yo, this is crazy. You know, holding it up, looking like, yo, that's this crazy. My fucking friends gave me some money. I wasn't even thinking about no money. I'm just down there had some fun to see what's going on. Man, yo, he said, I got to put this in the frame. That was crazy. And that's how he looked at that, man. And after that, we just started rolling around North Carolina. He started liking North Carolina. And, you know, I, I finally introduced him to my Money League boys, which was my artist at the time that we was working with, Men Black. And we went and found us a mansion. We rented the mansion out for a whole weekend. And uh, Dame had his staff come down, his whole camera crew. Bunch of uh, white guys, that the big technicians know what they was doing and all that. And we, we the whole weekend, murder move, I got footage, I got receipts of it. I'll show it to y'all. I might make, I might uh, do a little collage around it. I might mix it into this in a few. I don't know. I might mix it in. But the receipts is, uh, it's on uh, YouTube. But we filmed movies. The movie is Coach. Yeah, Dane, we got to put that movie Coach out. And Dane was started the star, one of the uh, the lead stars in there. So we filmed the movies and we filmed about five, six videos, music videos all weekend. And then had a ball just hanging out and building with each other and building our next plans. Dane loved that mansion so much, he ended up buying the mansion. Moved him and his queen and they moved out south to North Carolina. So this is when everybody was hearing Dame was in North Carolina and what he was doing in North Carolina. He came down here just to see what he can get his hands into, you know, and just to hang out with us and see what we was doing and end up loving being down here in North Carolina and made a move down here and was back and forth to LA handling his business back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, he made sure we was good, man. We and we, we put out some good music, good quality music. We was flooding it on all platforms. Some of the music is still out there. Y'all can check out the Lasada's mixtape. Y'all can check out the Coach and Vulture, the book mixtapes. Um, the Honor Up soundtrack with me and uh, Blackface did. That's still out there. So, um, yeah. I got to keep giving props to my brother that made sure that a brother like me was always straight whenever I needed something. Whenever I needed something that's going to better me, if he can uh, extend it to me, he always did. So this is a message for a lot of y'all guys, man. You got somebody to look out for you. Always get them that their props. Always get them that, you know, the their, uh, always keep your loyalty. And give them them flowers while they're here, man. Because a lot of loyalty is not around here, man. A lot of cats out here, some 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 effed up individuals, man. Get around you and use you for what they can get out of you. And then, boom, kapoof, gone. Me and Dame had disagreements. Jay Black and Dame had disagreements, but not in no arguments way. Don't get it twisted. With just certain things that we wanted to do, but it wasn't appropriate enough to do. So we still got to follow our homie Lee. He didn't get to where he at by making sloppy moves. He created a lot of legends out here. Ain't too many people can say they created a billionaire, man. Twice. So I'm just saying, sometimes you want to be with your friends and you want to do things a certain way and it don't go that way, just stay following the lead. You don't fall off and jump off the ship and jump off the boat. Everybody jumps off the ship and jump off the boat and they wonder why 
they ain't successful yet. Then they wonder why it's other people that's a team, they successful. They wasn't successful overnight. They stuck to their plan and they kept rolling with it. If you listen to their stories, it's not an overnight story. They popping now because they stuck together. That's the name of this game. Stick together. Don't never forget that, man. Never. So I'm going to get into something else real quick. Um, they said, uh, I don't know if y'all heard, but y'all let me know about Tiana Taylor, man. They said Tiana Taylor was at the gala eating Chick-fil-A sandwich, and they is, uh, they is mad with her. <laughs> y'all give me y'all intake on that, man. Should they be mad at her because she bought a Chick-fil-A sandwich there, even though they have all that food out there uh, catered properly and all that? One thing I do know about those type of events, man, they be the, the food is not good. Seasoning don't even really be seasoning. I mean, it look pretty. The presentation is, is very nice. But when you start eating it to it, it's like, oh, man, I can eat some regular food, man, and, and be all right. So I don't know why people would be mad at her because she bought her own food. <laughs> That's funny. They said one of her sisters had it in the bag holding it down for two before whenever she was ready to eat. And, you know, that's the that's the uh, the topic of discussion for today. This morning I, I heard that. And it's like I can imagine, man. It's like a lot of these high-end restaurants some of them you know the food be good depends on what it, it is i could pick something out nice but the majority of it it really don't be nothing like all that to me the food don't don't it's just it's just a nice restaurant so yeah you'll go there take somebody there for their birthday i get it i'm with that take your girl there or your you know your mom your sister you know somebody's birthday or just you and your homeboys want to have a good outing and, and chilling with each other for the vibe and all that, then yeah. But for the most part of it, a lot of them, them, them fancy restaurants overrated. Um, Ruth Chris is one of mine's preferably. I'll, I'll just go there, sit at the bar and get me and pick me out something nice to eat off the menu, but I won't go overboard with it. And if I'm wanting to do something fancy for somebody, I would take them inside there, inside the dining room area and eat and all that. But hey, I ain't. I ain't mad at, at, at Miss Taylor. Um, I would have bought me a sandwich and some more <laughs> to that joint too. So it is what it is, man. Y'all can't be mad man, about that, man. And uh, another thing I want to get into real quick. Everybody's talking about the Troy Ave situation. And... Uh, I spoke about it before. I'm preferably big on, once again, loyalty. Um, There's a part where he says that he talked with his team. And see, this is the part about, one part about being loyal. They didn't go in there with as far as the tax stone and all that, they didn't go to that event with intentions on having to take charges and stuff like that, but they all was riding in the car and they know them, them guns was in the car, they might have to use them. And that's what they really was there for, just in case if they had to use them, right? But you still know that they're illegal if you was to get pulled over or anything and searched and, they, and them guns got found. Normally, me, in my days, me and my team doing something crazy, whoever is the boss is the one that's supposed to at least walk away from that situation so he can go out and make sure that you are all right, get a good lawyer, get your bail money right. So he feels that his friends supposed to have took the weight for the guns that was in the car. He said he's going to go ahead and handle the other charges, the attempt murder and all that. He'll get he'll get around that. And he said he had a good lawyer that could beat charges because he done beat, beat gun charges because he done beat gun charges for Troy Ave himself and one of his other friends before. He'll put, you know, he'll if y'all take the charge, gun charges, I'll have my lawyer 
I'll get y'all the lawyer and we'll fight the case. Even if y'all got to sit for a few minutes, you just got to be realistic. Even if you got to sit for a few minutes, just sit them and make sure everything is good. They dipped out on them. But when all the rolling was good and all the, you know, the, the, the shows and the money and the girls and the spending, the, 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 the spending the money and, and, and going to get fresh so you can go to another event, everybody was there. See, you don't ever know your real friends until you really get in a situation with them. And I'm only speaking behind this because I've, I've, I've done it before. I've been in a situation and my little homie, his name is Tech. And Tech, if you see this, man, make sure you hit me. I'm looking for you, dog. Found you one time. You was in Greensboro, North Carolina, man. I lost contact. But one of my little homies, it was seven of us. We was in the news and everything, Kingston, New York. And they was on my neck hard, want me bad. <clears throat> and my little homie, he held that down. And they had to let all six of us go and kept him. I got out and went. I told the story before, but I'm going to tell it again, being that we talking about this Troy Ave stuff so y'all can understand I'm not making nothing up. I got out, left. Took my last money. I didn't have enough money. Cause they done, the police done killed us, done took everything and messed us up. I went, took my last money and put it on the lawyer. Told him, just sit, I got you a top notch lawyer. They had him going to court for about six months or whatever. And he got it all dropped down to probation. And he got up out of there. He sat there for a little while and he got probation, came home. So when you're out running around knowing that illegal stuff is around, know what you are getting yourself signed up for. And Troy Ave, it might have been a, a blessing in disguise because either way, later on, if they had got caught, they probably have just snitched on you, said something was yours anyway, or the guns was yours. Not saying you would have been hustling because you're not a hustler, but you, you still probably would have been around guns to protect yourself. But cats will break out on you so fast, man. It's like, it's, it's crazy. It's buck wild. It, it's, it's buck wild. How you think your friends is your friends when they smiling and they think good and all the money being spent, fly cars riding around and all that, then they dip out on you. That's whack. Now he got to hold all of that down by himself. So... I don't, I don't know, man. Everybody trying to say that he snitched, but I, I'm not understanding the part when you don't do a crime with a person and it turns to snitching and then you're just getting on the stand speaking about what's been seen on the cameras already and shot up himself. It ain't like they can, if, if, if they both came home tax tone at him, but they was gonna beef, they was gonna shoot it out, beef it out in the streets. Cause that's mostly when, you know, you don't wanna say nothing like, nah, I ain't saying nothing. When that, when that nigga come home, I'ma catch him. When you a celebrity, you can't be beefing out here, man. Y'all stop it. Stop it, man. A lot of these cats just be telling stories of what they used to. So, but now according to these snitches now, I mean, according to the snitch rule now, even if you was in the street and you are uh, rapping, you are still a civilian just because you're rapping about, and because you're rapping about street stuff, that still mean you in the streets. That will be plain stupid. You can't be in the streets. Can't be in the streets and uh, rapping and on a level up here when you all in the public eye and didn't be really knowing you got a beef. Because if that person dies and you didn't do it, and they know y'all beefing, police coming to you first if it's known publicly. So a lot of that, I you know, I don't I don't get it. Y'all hit me in the comments and let me know what y'all think about that. That 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 situation is a real, real crazy one. People just want to utilize the word snitch just because they hear somebody else saying it. Nine times out of ten, half of y'all tell on tell as soon as y'all get us some trouble. 
Nine times ten, half of y'all up there, not even no street people, don't even really know the meaning of snitching and all that. Y'all just doing and following and, and following uh following the uh the dick ride movement, the clout chasing and all that, to act like you're talking about something. That's all that's about. But you know. Who am I to say? Y'all just let me know what y'all think about it in these comments and all that down there, man. And another quick thing I want to get it to before I boogie on y'all. The Cameron and the Joe Buttons and the Nori thing. Um, I seen Nori send something back to Cam. But on some brotherly love type stuff. You know, and Cam ain't, ain't going back on him. And everybody know Cam. <laughs> he's real competitive. So if it was really felt some kind of way, he would have went back, back in on him. But... I kind of respect it where um, uh, Nori was coming from as far as Cam calling him and all that and hollering at him. But, you know, like like the public was saying, you know, Cam, Cam he's, uh, he's one of them dudes, man, that's uh, real challenging, man. So he's going to throw it out there. And you know, let the let the let the uh, let the public decide what it is. Even though it was old, like like he said, because me and Q Life spoke on this. When it first happened. So Cam feel like, yeah, he can speak on it whenever. But it's good that somebody of Cam's stature speak on it. We're young podcasts. We growing right now. So my podcast ain't going to reach the masses with that message back to Joe Buttons. And really, Joe Buttons really needed to hear that. Because saying that in the manner of how he said it about podcasting and all that. And this ain't throwing no shots at Joe. I'm not throwing no shots at Joe, trying to get my numbers up, nothing. I'm going to work hard to get my numbers up, and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm just putting out and speaking about what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. I'm, I'm going to go hard. I'm going to get my own numbers up regardless. But I just, I just feel like Joe needed to hear that because, you know, I was a fan of Joe. I had my team one time filming him at a release party with uh with him and um what was the songwriter name, man? He had put an album out, man. Um Then it'll come back to me. But anyway, I had uh I you know, my team was out there filming for my plugged in DVD at the time. And Joe was acting real arrogant, man. They was there to, to support what he was doing and all that. And he was acting like he didn't want to film with nobody. He didn't want nobody to film him. Well, why would you be able to promote something and you're an artist and you don't want cameras on you? Nothing but media and all that out there. That was my first time witnessing him being an arrogant type guy. And I like to always give a black brother they thumbs up for their success, man. And don't forget where you come from. So to say about other podcasters being a failure and all that, and you love to see people fail, that's not right, bro. That that's that's crazy. And I can get Cam thumbs up for holding it down for for the people that don't have a strong voice like him to let it be known out there that and bring awareness in a stronger way that Joe do get to feel the backlash of what he did and what he said. Because that ain't fair to nobody if they fail. And why black people want got to want to see another black brother fail or fail in podcasts? That, that's one of the most craziest statements ever. And, you know, like Nori said, I could tell Nori wasn't talking about Cameron at all. So it was, and Cam wasn't, his joint wasn't released yet at the time. So, you know, he spoke some factual stuff. And I rocks with Nori. I'm I, a, a big fan of Nori. And uh, actually, I used to open for Nori and Akinelli when I was rapping back then. But <clears throat> I'm just a fan of Nori because of his hustle. And, his, you know, his, his music as well, <clears throat> but his hustle is impeccable. So, but I'm, I'm glad him and Cam ain't let that go no, no further than nothing, man, because I like to see brothers sticking together and staying positive and all that. And Cam is a smart dude, and he's a good dude. He's another good dude that I'm, I could uh, give y'all stories about that did things for me as well. 
And I, I'm actually going to give y'all this camera on story on, uh, on another time. But anybody know Cam, he's a good dude. He's another brother that got a lot of people rich that's rolling around right now rich and successful. Made it happen. Another brother that I admire a lot in real life. And once again, it's that Harlem love, man. It's that Harlem hustle. It's that Harlem, I, I can't wait to help you win type of attitude. So that's what that's all about, man. But yeah, y'all, I had to come to y'all in my little spot right here, let y'all see my little area, my little accomplishments back there. I'm going to do a lot of filming here as well. And I'll be back to my set. You know what I'm saying? I got some big interviews and all that coming up. I like this little area right here, man. I feel like I could be more intimate with y'all and talk with y'all a little better, man. For real. Make sure y'all hit me up on my uh on my IG, man, on my Instagram. At I am Big Boosie. That's B-O-O-T-S-I-E. And make sure y'all check out my boy Q Life, the PBN network, on his network as well, man. We coming up. We making noise. Make sure y'all go to Plugged In D Plugged In TV. Q, Q, my boy Q, the manager. He's over there making noise. And Shadira. The Shadira effect is on the way. I see y'all going up there watching her, her trailer. Now she's about to come with a, a, a whole segment. So y'all stay tuned for that. And also, the Shannon's Office. Shannon's Office podcast. She's coming with that, that fraternity, that AKA talk, that business, that you know, uh, that teacher's perspective. She's bringing all that to y'all. So y'all stay tuned, man. You all with your boy, Big Boots. It's the things I do. Street knowledge podcast, baby. We not stopping, man. I got a lot of things prepared for y'all. Watch this.